Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. So this is going to be another Knit With Me video and I'm gonna link you the playlist up here so you can watch the whole series where I knit my sweater if you want to. And today I want to talk about hobbies and minimalism and how my view has changed on hobbies and what my hobbies are now and just everything to do with that. So I have talked about hobbies before on this channel and one specific video I still really really like is a video I did like one and a half years ago to help you declutter your hobbies if you wish to do that or if you feel like you have too much hobby gear. But for myself I have decluttered a lot of my hobby gear a long time ago and there was actually a time and I'm only seeing that now from like today's perspective watching back on the past, there was the last few years where I didn't really have any hobbies. Now, a lot of people think that might be because of minimalism and are like, um, minimalism is, is bad because you cannot have any hobbies anymore. And I don't agree with that. I think you can have the same hobbies we ha you had before because minimalism for me is absolutely not about getting rid of things that mean something to you and that are important for you and for your life, but of, about decluttering things and letting go of things that are not useful, that don't serve your life and that you really don't need to live the life you want to live. But me not really having any hobbies is actually not something I wanted to do, it's not something I ever planned for, but it's something that actually happened because I just did not have any time. And there is where I realized something, and that is that in order to have hobbies, most of the time you need to be privileged enough to have a certain amount of time to spend on your hobbies. And as a mom studying full time, having this YouTube channel, somehow I I didn't really have any time for hobbies. Now, of course, I had some time and I never said I, I didn't have hobbies because I still did things for myself sometimes, but it was not to the same degree where I have time now. And that is something I want to talk about because when I stopped studying or when I was done studying last fall, I realized that suddenly I had a lot more time. Now, I couldn't really work because my son is home a lot from school because they always close the school and sometimes they open it again and then they close it again. Right now he's at home again um, for the foreseeable future because his school is closed and he has to do everything from here and that takes up a lot of time. Like I have to do, I have to help him, I um, have to be here of course, I um, cannot really do whatever I want to do in the time where he's here, which is 24 hours a day, um, because of course I'm a mom, I'm a parent, I have to do everything necessary for him, but I still have more time. Uy, uy, uy. Oh no, look at that. I hope this is not gonna be a problem. Maybe, so you know where I'm at here. I have done the neck. And I'm now starting with the part, look, I'm actually wearing a sweater that works the exact way I'm, the sweater will work that I'm knitting right now. I'm now doing these things to broaden this here, to make like more space for my shoulders and my body. So that is what I'm doing. I'm like knitting around and I'm always making more stitches when I'm at these points in my sweater. That's what I'm doing here. And that is going to go on for a while until I'm like at that point. So I still have more time than I had before when I was studying. And so actually since I stopped studying, I realized that again, that I maybe have to think about what my hobbies are, that I should think about what I like to do if I actually have some time where I can do something I like to do. And that was a bit crazy because I never knew that feeling of actually having time that I could spend doing something that I want to do. And because when I was in school, when I was not a mom yet, then I just, I think I would spend all the time I had either being in school, doing homework, procrastinating on homework, watching shows on my laptop or being with friends. So there wasn't really time to think about and what I should do, but now I feel like I want to do more than just watching YouTube videos all day long or some TV shows. I want to do something that I know will make me happy, that I feel good doing. And so hobbies come into play. I want to have hobbies again. 
Maybe let's define a hobby for me first. So I think a hobby for me is something that I can do in my free time that has no like real pressure on it, where it's not about the outcome, but it's where about spending the time doing something that is beneficial, that feels good and yeah, that I like to do. And so for me, watching YouTube videos does not count as a hobby because it's not beneficial. Like I like to do it and I do it and it's fun and it's informative and it's inspiring, but it's not something like when I talk about hobbies, I want to create something or like I really want to do something. I don't just want to consume. But on the other hand, I think reading kind of is a hobby and there I'm just also consuming, right? But I'm at least like thinking a lot and processing what I learn and yeah, like thinking and learning about what I'm reading about. And so I think maybe that's a bit different from watching something like a show where you have the picture and somebody talking and you really don't really have to think so much anymore yourself. I don't know. But so let's talk about the hobbies that I have. So I would consider knitting a hobby that I have. And that is something that uh, in the past I've only done whenever I needed something. So I, do, I did it more like out of necessity. In Sweden, for example, we really didn't have enough warm socks. So I found some wool on a market and bought it and made socks out of it for all of us because the winter was cold and we needed some socks. And then the past few years, it kind of was the same. Whenever we did not have any warm socks anymore, I would knit us, me, my boyfriend and my son, some new socks. But then of course, it was only ever a relevant hobby or something I would do during winter or yeah, whenever I, I needed something. Like last spring, I remember I knitted my sun hat and then I knitted like one or two pairs of socks in the beginning of winter, but none of us really needed one. So I didn't really spend time knitting. And now this sweater is something very interesting, I think, because it was, it's kind of a hobby. It's kind of exploring a hobby instead of knitting something because I need something. Because let's be honest, I actually don't need another sweater. I have three sweaters and that is enough for me. And I know that that is enough for me, but I felt like I wanted to knit something. I saw this wool, I wanted to buy it and I'm knitting now because it's, because it makes me feel good. I like knitting. And so Maybe I can also see that as just an investment in my hobby because I like knitting without um, really focusing too much uh, um, on the outcome. But of course it's also, I made sure that it is something that I would want to wear. And some of you suggested that I like use it for my son if it doesn't end up fitting me. And that is a good idea. Like he would wear it as well if this sweater is not like big enough for me, if I don't have enough wool or something. But right now I want to make a sweater for myself, but we'll see. We'll see what happens because I have a limited amount of wool and I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough. Another hobby of mine is photography. And now I do a lot of photography and videography for this YouTube channel, which is also my job. So it sometimes doesn't really feel like a hobby anymore because I do it to earn money as well, but it's, it's very much still a hobby as well. So for example, yesterday we went outside to take some spring pictures. Like I took some spring pictures of my son and he has his own camera and he took some pictures of me as well. And whenever I go on a vacation or travel, I also take my camera because I really like photography. But during the past year, of course, you all know there was not really anything like vacation. So I didn't, do photography that much just because what should I take pictures of? Like, of course you can take pictures of things around you. And I did that, but not to the extent where that I used to take pictures in the past. Also because there are just some things that I'm not as excited about, like macro photography, for example, I loved that for a few years and then I, I stopped kind of, and it's not something that I'm very excited in anymore. Um, another hobby of mine is like moving my body or handstands. I, um, when I grew up, I was in a youth circus and I used to do like unicycling. I used to do like, yeah, different kinds of like acrobatics and aerial things and yeah, just different kinds of things you can do in a circus, juggling as well. I kind of stopped juggling. My boyfriend still is very much into juggling, but um, a thing that I always was fascinated um, and by and still do is 
I'm practicing handstands. Now I'm at a point where I can do a handstand where it works pretty well, where, but I'm still excited about it. There's still so much to learn, but usually I would practice handstands here at home, but I also would go to conventions like juggling conventions. And even though they are called juggling conventions, it's really um, things for everybody. And in Germany, there are a lot of juggling conventions. In the US, there are a few each year, but that's like a whole seen a whole like group of people that we would meet we would spend money on going to these juggling conventions um, and that's something that I like doing but of course again like during the past year there were no juggling conventions so I feel kind of disconnected with that hobby almost to a point where I'm not even sure if this is still my hobby since I haven't really done anything like that for the longest time now now I really have to take care of this mess here that doesn't look good and so during the past few months, I came to that point where I really always had time to do something where I felt like, oh yes, I deserve to do something for myself. Like for so many years, I really haven't had that much time and now I have the time and now I should really do something that I like to do, like a hobby. And then I didn't really know what to do. but. It's really not because of minimalism. I did not declutter hobbies because of minimalism. I did not like get rid of things that I would have wanted to do. So that's that's not the case if you were afraid that that could be the case. Um, but so I'm at a point that some of you have, have talked about that I never un really understood where I feel like what, what are actually my hobbies? What are things that I like to do? And for now, I think it's reading is something that I always loved to do as a teenager and then when I started to read a lot of things for school and for university I kind of stopped reading for myself because it's just it was so many thousand pages that I really did not have the capacity to also read for myself and so I kind of stopped reading as a hobby but now I don't have to read things anymore I just can read if I want to and I'm actually thinking about buying an e-reader like an e-book reader because I don't own any books I don't know if you knew that but I'm gonna link you the video where I talk about that up here I don't own any books and I don't plan on owning any books because I don't feel like I need to keep a copy of the thing that I read if I want to read it again I can get it from somewhere again, get it from a friend or get it as an ebook, as an audiobook, um, buying it secondhand or even buying it and putting it somewhere where other people can enjoy it afterwards, um, like an open bookshelf. That is something I love to use where you can just bring your books you are done reading so that anybody else can pick them up. And so I thought about buying an e-reader. Buying an e-reader would be a step that I'm not sure I want to take because it's just adding an, an object that I never owned before, uh, adding another electronic device, but I think it would make me happy because it would make my hobby of reading so much easier and I would be able to actually read a lot of books that I have wanted to read for the past years because I have, I have kind of a list, some of the books I have written down, others I have just on my mind or whenever somebody like comments it or talks about it, I think like, oh yes, I wanted to read that book. Um, but I, I've like, I ha did not have the time or I didn't buy it or I just, yeah, I haven't read it yet. And so an ebook reader would be perfect because I can still um, get books from the library, ebooks from the library, um, but I can also buy books and yeah, support the authors and things like that. And so I think, Maybe I'm gonna add an ebook reader as like a hobby tool, something. And also with knitting, like I, I, I kind of felt bad for a while when I realized that I bought this wool and maybe I wouldn't have bought it if I thought about it for a bit longer, but maybe I can also just view it as an investment into my hobby. So I don't even know if this like hobby crisis or it's not really a crisis, if this exploration of new hobbies or this question of mine that I want to figure out things that are hobbies that I can do to just spend time, feel good, maybe create something, learn something new, um, what these are. I don't really know if that has anything to do with minimalism because yes, as I said before, I never really decluttered things I still wanted to have 
for minimalism when it comes to like hobbies. So I, I don't think minimalism was something that took away hobbies from me. And I also really think, and I think this is, this is kind of important, minimalism shouldn't, like it really shouldn't be something that takes away hobbies from you. And I also want to say that, of course, this question can only come up in a position like mine where I'm very privileged at the moment to actually have some time to have a job, this YouTube channel that doesn't take up all of the time I have. I'm kind of occupied all the time with being a mom, um, doing things in the household, uh, working and things like that, of course, but I still have some free time. And I think that is a privilege because I really didn't have that before. And I didn't even like realize that I just did not have any time. And I also thought it's kind of normal. And only now where I see, and maybe it is normal to not have time for hobbies, uh, but but only now where I realize that I that I'm actually having some time that I actually can spend some time doing things that do not have to be work and super necessary things only now I realize that maybe I should get some hobbies or I should find some more things that just bring me joy that do not have to lead to an outcome that is measured in income or um, anything like that but I think the part where minimalism maybe has something to do with it is being the, the in intentionality or me actually thinking about it. And I don't think it's a bad thing because I want to be intentional when it comes to spending my time. I want to do things that make me happy, that um, lead to me living the life I want to live. And I want to live a slow life where I don't have to have very extraordinary things every day going on, but I want to have like hobbies, things I do that make me happy, that don't cost a lot of money or are very unsustainable that I just can, can do, like reading and knitting, baking bread and practicing my handstands and photography because I already have the equipment and it really makes me happy to capture the beauty that I see in the world. Oh, I'm, I'm knitting too far here. Really have to pay attention. And now I really would be interested in knowing what your hobbies are. Like, do you have hobbies? Do you have time for hobbies? If you're a minimalist, does that have anything to do with your hobbies? Like, do you feel limited in your minimalism because of your hobbies? Or do you lim feel limited in your hobbies because of minimalism? Or have you found a good balance? And I, I think it's it's possible and it has to be possible to find a good balance. Of course, if, if you want to and if you have time to find that balance um, and it's not always easy, I know that. So that you don't have to feel like you're giving up something that is important to you for minimalism. And also that you don't feel like hobbies are taking over your all of your possessions and you cannot be a minimalist because of your hobbies. Minimalism means something else for all of us because we live different lives and we have different hobbies and or we don't have hobbies at all. And that's perfectly fine as well. And so I but I would also be interested in knowing if you ever had like a conflict where you thought like, I really like that hobby, but it really like the stuff that comes with it doesn't fit into my desired lifestyle or where you, yeah, just had some kind of a conflict or where it was harder because you try to be a minimalist and have certain hobbies. So I loved sharing my thoughts on hobbies and my current situation when it comes to hobbies with you today. And I hope you maybe got something from it as well. And if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up because that would really help my channel. And if you want to see more videos, I link you a video here and a playlist here that you can check out if you have time and if you want to now. And I also hope to see you next time.